In Lola da Musica krijgt u les van pavement. De manier waarop deze Amerikaanse groep liedjes schrijft heeft momenteel veel navolging. Daarom welkom in The Pavement School of Songwriting. Hello, we're here because a uh, Dutch television station has asked us to write a song, um, show you the process of creating a song, um, and that's about it. songs have a feel that it seems like somebody's put like uh, a lot of effort into doing some good um, songwriting I think but there's a sort of a playfulness uh, involved in it which I think is definitely the playfulness is definitely a part of the what I would call the pavement spirit but um, um, uh, in that playfulness can be in the lyrics uh, uh, at times and sometimes it can it can be in the song in the actual structure of the songs well, we have some kind of sing-alongs that I think are rather like childlike or nursery rhyme-esque. Can you give examples? Well... Name titles? Well, like you could say the Shady Lane song is just like na 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 It's pretty... Well, you don't sing it very inspired at this moment. I mean, when I hear it on the Well, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. The song, but I'm saying when you, if you take it down to its nursery rhyme brattiness, it's really kind of like nye, 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 nye. but you sing it nice with a, a good like indie boy voice or whatever, and it, it's, it's endearing.
we've got these weird different tunings, you know, like almost like blues tunings that we use. And I think it, it creates this different sound, this different tone or whatever that makes it. Is it dissonant? It's not dissonant, no, I don't think so. Not in Sonic Youth terms or whatever, but it's, it's more like dissonant in pop terms where it's, it's pleasing to the ear, you know, a little more. How does it go, uh, the process of songwriting within the pavement? Who comes up with uh, the initial idea? Professor Malkmus. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I mean, he writes, he writes most of the songs. I mean, that's what he, he does uh, when he's um, at home. It's often good to, uh, when you start a uh, um, rehearsal or a jam, you kind of, like um, they say jam, you just kind of try to get loose. So you just play some whatever's coming to your mind. Now, you know that might not turn into a song, but it's, you're getting loose, and that's important to get loose. Let your mind flow. You gotta get there. Because otherwise you can be uptight. We don't want your songwriting thing shouldn't be like a, you know, a secretary's dictation or very precise. You're looking for something beyond, beyond the rational. Forced looseness is something that you know people try for now in um, the music uh, business. It seems like someone like Cheryl Crow, her first album or something, was like billed as a late night jam session, really loose and fun. But it's it's really these click track pop songs. That's you know aching to get on the radio, and every move's calculated. Um, and with us. Um, it's just not that way, really. I guess we, we, we do have some strategies that we use, I guess, to keep it that way. There are strategies, which are to record quickly and um, to not completely plan out your songs or arrangements before you arrive on the site of the recording or, you know, a few hours before you're going to do the lyrics. Um, and to record a lot of songs that don't get released or <clears throat> at least have six or seven. I think most bands do that, but just make sure you you have something to fall back on in that strategy because needless to say, it could backfire and you've wasted all the studio time. You just weren't feeling good that couple of weeks or the, the 12 songs you had in your head didn't come out, you know, you didn't think well enough to make them great songs, so. I don't know, you know, what you can say is your natural just uh, freedom of personality and, and what you've, you've, strategies you've used, I guess. They tend to wiggle when they walk. The infrastructure rots and the owners hate the jocks. With their agents and their dates If the signature's a check You'll just have to wait Well, counting up the instance that we saved Tired nation so depraved From the cheap CC of suede To the camera it took a giant ramrod To raise a demon settlement But I own silver
voice of Geddy Lee. How did it get so high? I wonder if he speaks like an ordinary guy. I know him, and he does. You're my fact checking cuz. <laughs> Stick. They will drown you in the creek, in the neck of the woods that was populated by a tired nation on the fly. Everybody knows the advice that was given up for free. Lots of details to discern, lots of details, but I hope till the rider. Oh, so the ride. So, hey, what was that? Hey. Uh oh, somebody has. I heard something catchy. Sometimes this happens. Someone in the band brings a a riff that's, that's catchy, and they drop it. A good thing to do if you're in a band and you have something catchy is just to uh, drop it in, like kind of like you're just doing it for fun, and then people overhear it. And that's kind of what happened right there. If they're listening. That's beautiful. things on the guitar I mean it's very basic you know you don't for one thing we don't know really how to play guitars great so I think that's an advantage you know it's an advantage but all these I kids so. are practicing yeah don't practice don't practice it'll help you listen to records and you know um, what you do now okay so we've got you've established that you like the riff this is riff-based writing, by the way, what we're doing today. Um, what we call riff-based writing, that means that you're playing off the guitar, something catchy off the guitar that you feel, well, you always like to play, um, you know, and so you've decided, I'm going to build a song around the riff. Uh, the Stones, the Rolling Stones, are a famous um, riff-based band, you know, like, like, you get the feeling that Keith Richards came up with that first before the rest of Brown Sugar. Um, so that's what we've done here, essentially. Scott is our Keith Richards. He's come up with the riff of the day. I thought that the psychedelic song was special too, but it's too genre-based. This is more of just kind of pop, which is, uh, I think, what you might want to try to write. Um, at home? Well, not at home. I mean, just so your friends will like you more, you know, because more people like pop than like garage rock, so. to be a little more focused. The more people you play to, you have to be a little more, you know, you can't screw around as much. You can't look whatever, you know, you can't be like the replacements every night, you know, so. What does that mean, be like the replacements every night? Well, the band, the replacements, you know them, they used to always, they play like maybe four bars of the song and just like, oh, whatever, you know. And go then they got drunk song. and yeah. fucked everything up. Well, and... that was, yeah, that was kind of like our whole, when we first started, maybe, we were a lot like the replacements. I get nervous every time that we play, okay. um, but I get, get into sort of a, uh, a little um, groove, <laughs> and uh, 
I kind of maintain that through the show. I mean, I could probably get um, even looser than I am, but I, I'm, you know, I, I do have, there's a sense of responsibility when I'm up there, you know, I feel like I have to play my notes, I want to play my notes right. I feel like I can step outside to a certain amount and kind of like think, well, that's the singer of the band, and I just like, I see this other person down there, it's like, of course it's me, but I managed to just like say, oh, that's the singer, you know? Whenever I sing, I think, well, what's a singer supposed to do, not what I'm supposed to do. Does that you mean know? you have like, um, is that an alter ego? Well, no, I'm not sure it's that that's the case, because, uh, <clears throat> I mean, it's still you. I mean, you're thinking about that singer. It's just probably how most people imagine themselves when they think about themselves. I mean, just when, you know, you wake up in the morning and say, what kind of person am I? Okay, I'm kind of like this and that. I'm going to be, you know, what did I do yesterday? I was mean to this person. I'm going to be nice today, you know? I'm like, I'm not going to say any negative things today, I'm going to be positive or whatever and, and you know, I'm a pretty good person or whatever. Well, <laughs> trying to stay sane. Well, that's kind of, the singing is the same way you think of the singer. Well, what kind of person is he? And But I guess it's you too, you know, it's, you kind of create a, a, uh, a world for them. Um, and so the lyrics, they just kind of, they come out of just your imagined, what you're imagining is, uh, what a singer, a cool singer would sing, you know? Yeah, let's just no, do that. Okay. But you sing it. What's the chorus, though? I, I Make up a new melody. My melody's too I'll catchy. I'll sell the Preston School of Industry. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, your melody's pretty good. I don't Mine's know. Mine's pure The chorus is just uh, E. doing the coffee shop stuff. You sing it though, because my singing is, it's not appropriate and it's your song. It's hard, you don't want to sing another person's song. But I like when you sing my songs. Yeah, because you don't have to sing. <laughs>
What's the best part about being in, in pavement for you? Oh, uh, best part. I suppose the actual recording of records is very rewarding um, in an emotional sense. And uh, other than that, just it kind of replaces your gen, you're just, it's something to do, like overall, like um, in the whole scheme of things when you're, <clears throat> you don't know what your purpose is or something and you're kind of like afraid about the future. This kind of gives you something to say, okay, I'm doing this. So, you know, it's basically just good for your ego, I guess. Hello, welcome back. It looks like we've got a finished version on our hands here of the song, and we hope you like it. Good job. Good work. You. That's Way officially a song. Hey, Scott. Give yourself job. a hand. <laughs> Thanks for the studio audience tonight. Happy to have you. Oh, hey, Charles. Yeah. How to press a record, perhaps. Yeah, next week we'll be doing um, yeah, how to manufacture your own single. How to get on the top of the Dutch Pops. I don't know what that is. Is there any such thing? <laughs> <laughs>